Hello, everybody. Hello, hello. Thank you. Everybody have a, everybody have a seat. Thank you. Hello, scientists. So this is got to be the most fun event of the year, um, at least in the top three. Uh, and, and before I go any further, though, I need to lay down some rules. Uh, you know, we had to put these in place uh, based on the previous science fairs. Uh, first of all, no taking your robots or electric go-karts for a spin on the South Lawn. <laughs> you can't do that. Uh, rule number two, if you're going to explode something, you have to warn us first. <laughs> Actually, don't, just don't explode anything. <laughs> Number three, no using a marshmallow air cannon in the house. <laughs> Unless you let me shoot it first. Um, this is our fifth White House science fair. And every year, I walk out smarter than I walked in. Because these young people have something to teach all of us, not just about batteries or attacking cancer cells or how to build a working robot or a rocket. Uh, I will say, though, the robots uh, I see keep getting smarter every year. Uh, we are keeping an eye on that, by the way. <laughs> You're on notice, Skynet. Uh, but these young scientists and engineers teach us something uh, beyond the specific topics that they're exploring. They teach us how to question assumptions, uh, to wonder why, something's the way it is and how we can make it better. And they remind us that there's always something more to learn and to try and to discover and to imagine, uh, and that it's never too early or too late to create or discover something new. Uh, that's why we love science. It's more than a school subject or the periodic table or the properties of waves. It is an approach to the world, a critical way to understand and explore and engage uh, with the world, and then have the capacity to change that world and to share this accumulated knowledge. It's a mindset that says that we can use reason and logic and honest inquiry uh, to reach new conclusions and solve big problems. And that's what we are celebrating here today with these amazing young people. Now, uh, first of all, I'm going to uh, announce the people who are not that young, although some of them are youngish. Uh, we're joined by some of America's top scientists and engineers, uh, starting with uh, my science advisor, John Holdren. Uh, hey, John. The director of the National Institute of Health, Francis Collins, is here. The head of our patent and trademark office, so young people, if you've got something fancy, talk to Michelle Lee right here. She's ready to sign you up. Uh, the acting director of the U.S. Geological Survey, Suzette Kimball, is here. And uh, somebody who has one of the coolest jobs in town, the head of NASA, Charles Bolden, is here. Where's Charlie? If there are any aspiring astronauts here, he's the man to impress. Uh, he's been in space himself. Uh, we also have uh, some outstanding guests who are here who've been participating in this uh, on an ongoing basis. Uh, Bill Nye, the science guy, is here. <laughs> Signature bow tie. Uh, so is Rush Holt, who is one of the few scientists to serve in Congress. We could probably use some more. There you go. Russ is uh, now the head of the American Association for the Advancement of Science. Uh, and uh, just so you knew that athletes think science is cool, too, we've got Victor Cruz of the New York Giants here. He is a big fan of science, and he has to be as uh, all pro wide receiver. He's got to figure out trajectories and angles and velocities and uh, the physics of doing the salsa. Um, for those of you who don't know, he does a salsa every time he gets a touchdown, and 
uh, he gets a lot of them. <laughs> now, uh, Victor's been here before to celebrate uh, the New York Giants winning the Super Bowl. Uh, but as I've said many times before, uh, we've got to celebrate the winners of our science fairs as much as we celebrate the winners of football or basketball or uh, other athletic competitions. Because young scientists, mathematicians, engineers, they're critical to our future. You guys are the ones who are going to define the contours of the 21st century. And I just had a chance to meet some of these uh, young people, and I fired a lot of questions at them. Uh, and uh, they know their stuff. Uh, it is unbelievable what so many of these young people uh, have accomplished at such an early age. Uh, and I wish I could talk about every single one of them, because uh, all of them uh, were extraordinarily impressive. Uh, but I want to leave enough time for everybody else to explore some of their exhibits. Uh, John Holdren probably wants me to get some of their resumes uh, in case uh, we, we're hiring. Uh, but l let me just mention a few of the young people that I had a chance to talk to to give you a sense of uh, the scope uh, and depth and quality uh, of the work that they're doing. So first of all, uh, we've got uh, Sofia uh, Sanchez uh, Maez, who's here from uh, uh, Las Cruces, uh, New Mexico, where's, where's Sophia? I just talked to her. Did she get in? There she is, right there. The, uh, <laughs> Sophia is a, a senior in high school, and she is crazy about algae. <laughs> now, to the non-science buffs here, you might say, what's so great about algae? Uh, but Sophia knows that algae is fascinating, uh, especially as a potential fuel source. So scientists are already working to turn algae into fuel. One of the hurdles is to make the process more uh, efficient, so less energy gets wasted along the way. Sophia saw that was a challenge. She asked why. She has created a more efficient method. She's identified optimal algae to use in her method. Uh, and she's helping to bring the world closer to using algae as a clean, renewable, and even inexhaustible energy source. Uh, and it's already being tested in her hometown, uh, the process that she's developing. It is amazing, so let's give Sophia a big round of applause. Um, Harry Paul's here from Port Washington, New York. Where's Harry? There's Harry right here. So, uh, Harry, Harry graduated and is now in his first year at Tufts. But, but listen to this story, because I think it gives you a sense of the quality of the young people we've got here. Uh, Harry was born with a condition called uh, congenital scoliosis, a curvature of the spine. So growing up, Harry endured more than a dozen operations. Rather than feel sorry for himself, he thought, there's got to be a better way of doing this. Uh, so he designed a new type of spinal implant. Starting in his freshman year in high school, he started uh, researching the processes that he himself had gone through. His doctor was an expert on this. And he decided, let's see if I can come up with something better, uh, an implant uh, that can grow along with the growing child so it doesn't have to be constantly replaced or adjusted, which means you don't need as many intrusive operations. Uh, and Harry's implant, uh, could reduce the number of surgeries that a child may need from more than a dozen to as few as five, which obviously would cut down medical costs, but more importantly, uh, would save a lot of young people pain and time out from school and recovery time and the potential complications of an operation. Unbelievable stuff. Give Harry a big round of applause. So Nikhil uh, Bahari is here from Pennsylvania. Where's uh, Nikhil? There's Nikhil. He is uh, he's a freshman, right, uh, in high school. Uh, interested in how we can better protect ourselves against hackers and data thieves online. So scientists are already using biometrics to prove that each of us walk in our own distinct ways. Uh, and Nikhil wondered, uh, what if we each type in distinctive ways? So he collected all kinds of data about how a person types, uh, their speed, how often they pause, how much pressure they use. 
uh, built a special keyboard to test it, uh, and he proved that his hypo uh, hypothesis was correct, that even if somebody knows your password, they don't necessarily punch it in exactly the way you do. Uh, and you know, he asked why and made discoveries that now could keep our online accounts more secure. So in the future, if uh, keystroke-based authentication uh, keeps your siblings from breaking into your Facebook account or your Instagram account, you will know who to thank. It will be Nikhil. Congratulations. So, so th those three are just samples of, of the extraordinary scientists that we've already, and engineers that we've, we've already got here. Uh, I should give special mention to uh, our Girl Scouts from Oklahoma. Where are those super girls? Yes. You can't, they're standing up, but you can't really see them because they're in kindergarten and first grade. Uh, they are today's youngest scientists uh, at six years old. Uh, they built their device out of uh, Legos. They realized that some people who might be paralyzed or, or arthritic might have trouble turning pages on a book, so they invented this page turner. It was awesome. <laughs> it was working so well, despite the fact, as they pointed out, <laughs> This is a quote. They said, this is just a prototype. <laughs> That's what they said. So, well, this is just a I said, well, how'd you come up with the idea? They said, well, we had a brainstorming session. <laughs> and then one of them asked, Mr. President, have you had brainstorming sessions? <laughs> I said, yeah. But I didn't come up with something as cool as this. <laughs> the automatic page turner. Unbelievable. Uh, Ruchi Pandya, where's, where's Ruchi? There's Ruchi, uh, found a way to use a single, <laughs> Ruchi found a, a way to use a single drop of blood to test a person's heart function, uh, much like a person with diabetes tests their blood sugar. Uh, Anvita Gupta, uh, where's Anvita? There she is, <laughs> used, uh, artificial intelligence and biochemistry to identify potential treatments for cancer, tuberculosis, Ebola. Uh, what she's done is she's developed an algorithm uh, that could potentially significantly speed up uh, the process of finding drugs that might work against these diseases. Uh, something smells like it's burning there. And I don't think it's an experiment. I think it's uh, somebody's camera. Do we have it under control? We don't see any uh, flames bursting. Yes? All right. OK, it sounds like a little le electrical short, but uh, let's keep monitoring that. <laughs> Exits will be <laughs> in that direction, should anything happen. Uh, the last time there was a fire here, uh, the British were invading. <laughs> so. <laughs> but uh, and Vita's algorithm is, is, has the potential of speeding up pathways to discovering uh, what drugs would work uh, on what diseases and is consistent with some of the work that we announced around precision medicine uh, that we are f uh, funding at a, at a significant pace uh, here at the White House. Now, I, I should point out that like several of the young people here, Anvita and Ruchi are first generation Americans. Their parents came here in part so that kids could develop their talents and make a difference in the world. Uh, and we're really glad they did. Uh, so I want to congratulate all of you for your remarkable achievements. Uh, you've made a lot of people proud. Your parents, your teachers, your friends, your mentors. Uh, and as president, I'm proud of you because America is going to be stronger and smarter and healthier and a much more interesting place because of you. Uh, but it's not enough for our country just to be proud of you. We've also got to support you. We've got to make sure that young people like you are, are going to keep on having what you need to discover and experiment and to innovate. So I've got three announcements to make uh, that really were already kind of in in the works before I met you guys, but, uh, 
but uh, it's a pretty good occasion to announce them because you're so inspiring. First, uh, four years ago I set a national goal to provide 98% of Americans with high-speed wireless internet so that any young scientist or entrepreneur could access the world's information. Today I can announce that we have achieved that goal and we did it ahead of schedule. Uh, that's a big deal. Second, to make sure that we keep expanding broadband across the country, I'm creating a new team called the Broadband Opportunity Council, made up of leaders across government who will work with business and communities to invest in next generation internet nationwide, uh, because this is not just going to be a key for your ability to learn and create, it's also a key for America's ability to compete and lead in the world. Uh, number three, no young person in America should miss out on the chance to excel in these fields just because they don't have the resources. So five years ago, we launched a campaign called Educate to Innovate to help more of our students explore science, technology, engineering, and math. Today, I'm pleased to announce $240 million in new contributions from businesses, from schools, from foundations across the country to help kids learn in these STEM fields. So we are very, very proud to make that announcement. Corporations have pledged to help expand high-quality science and technology education to more than 1.5 million students. More than 120 universities have pledged to help train 20,000 new engineers to tackle the toughest challenges of this century. Uh, foundations like the Howard Hughes Medical S uh, Institute and the Gates Foundation and the Simons Foundation will support scientists earlier in their careers with mentoring and funding. And all told, these new commitments bring our grand total up to $1 billion in commitments to our kids since we first got this initiative started five years ago. Uh, and I was talking to uh, uh, some of the folks who are helping to finance our efforts, and one of the things that they've discovered uh, is that it's not enough just to talk about STEM. Part of what's important to do is also to recognize that uh, what you do in math and engineering and science has a purpose to it, that there are huge challenges that we have to solve in, in how we have clean energy and how do we clean up our environment and, and you know, how do we solve uh, crippling diseases like Parkinson's or Al uh, Alzheimer's. And, and when we give students the inspiration, not just uh, of that math and science are inherently interesting and technology and engineering are inherently interesting, but there's actual problems to solve, it turns out that Young people, they rise to the challenge, and that's what's so exciting about it. We don't want to just increase the number of American students in STEM. We want, to, we want to make sure everybody's involved. We want to increase the diversity of STEM programs as well, and that's been a theme of this science fair. We get the most out of all our nation's talent, and that means reaching out to boys and girls, men and women, of all races, all backgrounds. Science is for all of us. And we want our classrooms and labs and workplaces and media to reflect that. Uh, and this is something that uh, Megan Smith, our chief technology officer, is really keen about. You know, part of the problem is we don't tell the stories enough of the incredible scientists and inventors along the way who were women uh, or people of color. And, and, and as a consequence, people don't see themselves as potential scientists, except the good news is these young women and uh, African-American, Latino, and uh, Asian-American folks, uh, young people who are here today, uh, you guys certainly see yourselves as, as scientists. So you're helping to inspire your, your classmates and kids who are coming up behind you uh, to pursue these dreams as well. And that's what's so exciting. Because the United States has always been a place that loves science. We've always been obsessed with tinkering and discovering and inventing and pushing the very boundaries of what's possible. That's who we are. It's in our DNA. Techno uh, technological discovery helped us become the world's greatest economic power. Uh, scientific and medical breakthroughs helped us become the greatest source of hope around the world. Uh, and that's not just our past, that's also our future. 
because of amazing young people like this. So I want to thank you for inspiring me. You got me off to a good start today. Uh, keep exploring, keep dreaming, keep asking why. Don't settle for what you already know. Never stop believing uh, in the power of your ideas, your imagination, your hard work to change the world. Uh, and to all the adults in the room, uh, and to any members of Congress who might be listening, uh, just, just think about all, oh, Eddie Bernice Johnson is here, uh, an outstanding member of Congress who's a big supporter of, of uh, STEM education. Uh, just remember all these young people to continue to pursue the research that uh, might bring about a new clean energy source or might cure a disease, uh, a lot of them are going to need the capacity to get research positions and fellowships and grants. And that, particularly when it comes to basic research, has typically been funded by the federal government. And you know, my federal budget promotes a significant increase in uh, the kinds of research that needs to happen. Uh, unfortunately, uh, some of the budgets coming out of Congress don't make those same commitments. So it's not enough for us to just lift up young people and say, great job, way to go. You also have to have labs to go to, and you've got to be able to support yourself while you're doing this amazing research. Uh, and that involves us as a society making the kind of investments that are going to be necessary for us to continue to innovate for many, many years to come. So congratulations. Give all these young people a big round of applause. Go take a look at their outstanding stuff. It's really great.